Okay, here are some ET experiences I've had recently that uh, I haven't been able to share uh, quite yet. So, uh, a few weeks ago I was laying in bed and I woke up and sometimes when I sleep, I sleep kind of like my hands are up around me and like, uh, if you saw me, it looks awkward. Uh, and I probably sleep like a, some of the way an extraterrestrial sleeps or something. But uh, the word extra dimensional popped in my head as I was waking up and I went, oh, I wonder if I have extra dimensionals around me because I don't often use that word. Uh, I usually just use galactics, ETs, extraterrestrial or interdimensional, even though I know there are extra dimensionals around me, interdimensional, like we just have two, all kinds of labels and, you know, that side of sort of thing. And for some reason, I had that thought run through my head. And I even thought in the moment, I'm like, why would I think that? I know I do. Um, of all the beings I work with, I know I do. Uh, and I looked up and out of the peripheral of my eye, I watched a light spin and a uh, portal wormhole thing open. And I was like, oh, somebody's coming. And my hands were like this. So kind of, kind of, kind of just like this, I guess. Um, and it opened up above my hand, my right hand. And, you know, ignore the cat in the cupboard. <laughs> it opened up above my right hand as I'm laying down. And a big, long, purple finger. Uh, now, I'm, I'm bad with lengths because measurement isn't actually often perceivable when I when I have experiences. But I, I would say, based on my fingers, it was at least three times the size. I mean, it was, it was long. It was nine inches, if not longer. Um, comes comes through the portal, gray, purplish color, big, attached to a big bean, but the portal is only like this big. It was only enough for a couple fingers to come through. So you see the finger come through and the hand is kind of like curled like you would do if you were to poke in something. And um, I'm like, what's that? And it's like, put, put your finger up. So I put my finger up and I know from past experience, if I have a being around, um, don't move quickly, no sudden movements, no fear-based actions, stay present, those types of things. Communicate telepathically, just stay in your body and try to figure out what's going on before you start shifting because some stuff gets really nervous when you move around based on um, human reactions on a, on a whole as a collective being very fear-based. So I, I, I hear it go, put your finger up. So I'm like this, and I put my finger up. And then as I'm doing that, that finger comes through the portal and hits my finger. And I'm like, oh, is this real? And then it takes my finger and pushes it down like this, very gently, not, not to hurt it, but very gently. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's real. So then I go, okay, it's trying to talk to me. Well, can I talk to you? And it's like, no, we were just, we opened a portal just to show you we were here. And then you just see the, this giant purplish gray finger that's huge. Like I, the being it was attached to had to be, uh, I mean, to have a hand that size, you know, nine, 10 feet tall. And the, the hand, the finger receded through the wormhole portal and it just went and disappeared. So that was one of the experiences I had lately. Uh, another one was, um, and I have a list here because oftentimes I have so many of them that oftentimes I don't even remember to talk about them to people because it's just part of my life. So another one that came up was dragons. Dragons are funny. Um, this is something that I just wanted to share with you as a collective when it comes to dragons. It's not really exper an experience. It kind of is. Uh, when it comes to dragons and readings and I'm tapping into people and clients, and a dragon comes through. When we do the readings, we do, we pick a message, uh, or not pick a message, pick a song. So they tell me, hey, type into, and I use Spotify, so they tell me, type into Spotify these keywords. It's usually two to three keywords. Um, and the coolest thing happens because I'll type in those two to three keywords, and every single time a different song, I can type the same thing in, for another being and different songs will come up because spirits guiding the search results that, that appear energetically.
kind of uh, per persuading or uh, not persuading, but like the, the word is escaping my mind, but energetically guiding how those results appear. Dragons <laughs> love dragon forces through the fire and flames. If you have dragons around you, listen to dragon forces through the fire and flames. I don't know how many times I've had dragons around people who feel the energy of that song in my field because they know. I, I used to listen to heavy metal all the time. This is very fast. It's about dragons. Um, and there's almost always one, if there's a group of them that come around, there's almost always one that goes, pick that song and put it in for people to listen to. So energetically, there's something about that song that if you're interested in dragons, listen to that song. It might help you connect with dragons. And it's it's just funny how, how most of the beings I work with won't pick metal, heavy metal, unless they're like an ancestor or a human uh, type vibration because it's, it's typically far, like a lower vibrational uh, chaotic energy. Uh, but a lot of the dragons end up picking it, and I feel like it's more the story and the energy behind the storytelling and stuff of some of those those bands because they sing and make worlds about dragons. So another one that happened was um, Sabrina, my friend, uh, is a my guides use the word canid, C A N I D, like a dog humanoid. Uh, she's a, she looks like a fox. If you took a fox, put it, made it bipedal. Um, like a human and uh, took out most of the animal features other than the head and the fur uh, she has she wears like a white shirt um, she has human like breasts she uh, human you know bipedal human form uh, her fingers are more like a dog like if you took the pads of a dog and made fingers out of them um, you know, orange fur, that orange brown fur of a fox, white on her chest, like there's a white strip that comes down uh, through the center of her chest and um, has the fox face, uh, fox head on her. There's not much more, like if you know what a fox looks like, you just take that type of head and put it on. But like a very um, softer version of a fox than what we have in our natural world beautiful, beautiful woman, uh, uh, galactic being. She lives uh, somewhere in, I keep saying Canis Minor, uh, one, of the, one of the stars in Canis Minor. Uh, and she came to me one night telepathically. I, a lot of times when I fall, start falling asleep, I start going places, I astral travel, I telepathically connect because the day isn't bothering me, I'm not doing other things and I'm just relaxing and let, feeling the energy as I fall asleep. So I telepathically connected with her and I'm like, what are, what are you doing? And she was laying down. Um, I feel like she's a teenager. Uh, it's, I get, we get the sense that she's a teenage energy, not, not like super young teenager, but maybe like 18, 19. Uh, comparably in human years. You know, keep in mind, ETs, galactics don't all have the same aging processes that we do. So comparatively on her journey, she would be like an 18, 19 year old, I feel. She was laying down on the ground in her room. Um, she had a, like not like a house like ours, but wherever she was, she was in a building type of thing, structure. Laying down and had some stuff in her hands and she's spinning them and she's rolling them out. And there are these little metal, at least I'm assuming they're metal, these little metal things. And if you're familiar with jacks now, I understand a lot of the younger generation probably doesn't know what a, what jacks are. They're these, um, how do you describe them? They're little pieces of metal. They have points and they almost look like a star in a sense. I think they have three point, four points. I don't remember. They, they have a certain number of points on them, but they're little pieces of metal and you throw them out. And I don't remember the old game. This is, this is like a game from the 
40s and 50s and before that and even a lot farther before that where you throw these pieces of metal out and then you take a marble or a bouncy ball or something again not super familiar with the game but um i'm, I'm familiar enough just to kind of know what it is and they would throw that ball at it and it like if you hit the pieces you got to take them or something so it's a it's an older game um and uh she's playing with these pieces of metal in her hands and she's talking to me and i'm like oh what are you doing and we're just i don't remember the conversation general general conversation checking in how are you doing what have you been up to and those types of things and then um she says hey can i give you a reading and i was what are you talking about give me a reading i've never <laughs> what do you mean and this is where it became important to mention that not all galactics um are as connected and conscious as people want to feel and think they are uh some galactics are on a journey just like us they're evolving just like us some are lower on the journey and not lower as in like i'm better than you but they're they're many steps behind us many steps behind us uh and i was like what are you doing she's like well i'm working with my my reading abilities her ability to tell the future like read the future and that sort of thing so i was like sure I'm, okay and that's unique for me even even when i told this story to a friend my friend was like you don't let anybody read you and i went well yeah but they're galactic they're not a human <laughs> type of thing um and i i don't i i i don't go to readers uh, or anything um and so i i watched as she took these jack like things and she took them and she threw them onto the ground in front of her and i was kind of watching like uh energetically you can pop in like i could see her initially what she was doing kind of a, like a remote viewing type of scenario and then i energetically popped in behind her head and there are ways that we can kind of share eyes and bodies and experiences and this sort of thing when we do this work and so i could see her like shake these things up in her hands almost like i was looking at them throw them out and they all had different designs jacks if you if you look up jacks they all look the same these all had different designs there were pieces of metal that were like they some of them were like a pyramid or a circle but they were spiraled they weren't solid pieces like a a lego they weren't solid like a lego they were like pieces of metal with these uh why, why don't I, I had a paper here why don't i just draw one kind of real quick so it, they'd have these like circles on them stretches of metal and then the circles were kind of like the feet i guess you might call them so they would land different ways so like this might be one uh and then you'd have another one that had another arm on it so it'd have other arms and pieces to it so you might get something like that or something that stretches out like all these different pieces of metal in different shapes and every single one that landed had a specific meaning and not only the meaning of the, the piece that landed but the way it landed in balance so they could land and they would land in balance in different ways based on how those feet set together uh and then the order of which they landed created a reading so she she threw them out and i saw the pattern there was a straight line of them and i saw a cluster of them and i immediately knew what it was because it's the same messaging i had been getting from my own galactics and she started telling me and walking me through the pieces and then telling me the the messaging that i was giving and she's kind of like what does that sound like? how does that sound you know and i was like that's spot on you know you're, you're doing great and the uh, she was all excited too because it validated what what she was doing because i knew enough about my timeline and my place and what, what i'm doing for that to resonate with me and she was playing with this tool on her world and trying to experiment with them it was much like doing a rune reading if you're familiar with runes or ogum or um 
I mean, you could you could say tarot or oracle because we technically we don't throw them, but you drop a card. Some people use bones, fragments. You can you can read really read anything you want to read energetically with the right intention and feeling the energy. So that was another experience that was um, a little while ago, and I'm going to be drawing Sabrina. Uh, so if you're not on social media already, at Awaken with Willow on TikTok, Instagram, Threads, all the other platforms. The, uh, I'll be sharing her image when I finally draw it. I'm gonna do a quick sketch for the one project I have doing, I'm working on called The Children of Spirit. If you have awakened kids, uh, intuitive kids, check that out I'm on, on my website. Uh, it's called The Children of Spirit and she'll be in that and then she'll be, I'm gonna do a detailed one for the other project that I'm working on that's far more it'll be far more detailed kind of like um show you the difference here this is a, a detailed regular spirit art reading that i normally do uh, and this is a small scale version there uh, six by nines and this is a four by six quick sketch marker work so she'll be in both styles very soon a very beautiful being again fox humanoid being physical another world galactic uh and on their own conscious journey. So the other one that was really interesting, so we just talked about Sabrina. The other one that was really interesting was uh, this being who, uh, I don't have their artwork with me. It was a client piece, so I believe it's stored away. I, I take the client pieces and I store them away in case anybody asks me for them in the future. Um, so I was doing a reading and I tapped into this being and when I tap in, I tap in telepathically, typically my guides have gate, I have gatekeepers and I have guides who are gatekeepers who say, Hey, uh, only this being is allowed to come through right now because when I'm doing a reading for somebody, they'll have hundreds of beings, your past lives, ancestors, galactics, inner earth, whoever they've run into collected around them. And so we have to set up a perimeter and say only one being is allowed. Give us the most resonant, you know, the, the highest good, highest benevolence, whoever is the most important for them to hear from at this time. So I get telepathically connected to this being and it's a galactic and I'm like, okay, uh, where are you from? And they say outside of Orion's belt. So there's the belt, but they keep saying outside of the belt. So we see the belt and they kept showing me a star off to the left side that was very, very dim, very dim. So much farther away than Orion. One of their messages was to tell people to remember that not all galactics are from the stars that we take as constellations, that a lot of them are coming from places far, far, far away that we can't even see and have no uh, content or storytelling from because they're new. They're new, they're coming. And so I'm talking to her telepathically because we end up telepathically hooking in through quantum energy and entanglement and all that. And I do this thing where galactics who are physical in the moment that I'm experiencing them, or even star seed readings when I go back and, and see star seed past lives, my energy pulls to them and I can remote view and see them. So I go and I stand in front of her and she's meditating. She's this big, enormous being who's nine, 10 feet tall, probably uh, looks like if somebody saw her, they would say she was a Sasquatch. She's not a Sasquatch, looks different, looks, looks different, but is super hairy, real muscular. Fem she, she was a female but more masculine in their energy, more muscular warrior type energy, um, but feminine. And uh, wearing a blue vest that had like a sunflower type of emblem flower thing on it. It might've actually been a flower. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then a design on the vest on an undershirt type thing, but these big arms covered in hair, uh, they said they their DNA is mixed with Sasquatch, which, which is where they get some of their features from. And 
very strong feminine warrior energy sitting on a ship on the floor of a ship meditating to talk to me she was meditating to talk to me and this isn't uncommon i've experienced a lot of galactics and other beings who sit down in meditation to have that communication with me but as she's sitting there meditating i can see others walking around her in the background another one came up at one point was talking to her and they're talking in their own language and walks away and she comes back to me and so we're having this telepathic conversation where i'm in my space drawing her and telepathically seeing her in the my mind's eye which is this black space in my mind my mind's eye seeing her with my third eye on a ship kind of remote viewing in and then i'm sitting there and i'm drawing I'm like okay i gotta focus on drawing and she tells me more information about them and i bring myself back i start drawing and she travels back with me and pops into my room astrally kind of the way i was experiencing her but her energy pops in the way um, her, her actual physical size is. So she's barely fits in the, the apartment. Uh, I don't know how high these ceilings are. I'm six foot, so they're probably eight and a half foot to nine foot tall. Um, she pops in and I can feel her. And she, she's like looking over my shoulder. So at this point, I'm having this very wild experience of there is a galactic on a ship far in the distance of Orion and they want to work with humans and find their way to earth from with these ships and stuff they're on that ship I'm telepathically talking to her I'm viewing her like astrally remote viewing whatever whichever term you want to use I kind of consider them one and the same in a lot of senses um, I'm sitting there in front of her energetically while I'm drawing and she's also behind me energetically while I'm drawing uh, so it's one of these things that your capacity to experience expands and you won't just experience one thing so when you start this work you're going to start out you're probably going to start out telepathically hearing voices or seeing an image and then as you uh, progress your abilities will expand to where you can sit in front of beings and then you can experience almost multiple things at once while you're doing this work so you can experience being on a ship while staying in your body and doing something and your energy goes and I've done that before I had a dragon one time I was driving down the road and the dragon was in the sky it was a big white dragon um, it was like hey come come visit me I want to talk to you real quick and I was like no I'm driving down the road and my guides and the, the energy were like, no, you, you need to go. And so I was like, am I going to be safe? And I trusted them and they lifted me up into the sky. So I'm talking to a dragon. Not really, and I, I do not recommend this. If you do not do this, I do not recommend this. This is something I've done because it, it's far more advanced. But just to tell you the experience, driving down the road, my energy's up in the sky talking to a dragon. I don't really know what's going on in the physical space, but I can see the road and it's just kind of like, I'm not there type of thing, I'm somewhere else. And then a few miles later, I pop back in and I have no recollection of the drive because the guides took over, the spirit took over. You can end up doing a lot of advanced things by taking the steps, working on telepathy, work on traveling, your third eye, all this type of stuff, it all comes together in the end. But it doesn't activate all at once, I guess is the point. It doesn't, act, a lot of people are like, I wanna do it all right now. You gotta take the baby steps and start with whatever is activated for you right now. Some people that's telepathy, some people it's the third eye, some people it's feeling, just feeling the, the energy in the room. Um, that's how I started a long, long time ago was a lot of feeling energy. Let's move on. Um, so that was the being on the ship. And uh, actually, I feel like that's those were the three or four that I wanted to talk about for the experiences lately. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you are experiencing extraterrestrials, galactics, all those sorts of things, uh, 
check out my website, awakenwithwillow.com. You can find spirit art readings, you can find books, you can find free information channels, uh, all kinds of free stuff on there and uh, projects that I'm working on. And of course my social media where you can see all the spirit art and the images of the beings that I draw. Thank you for watching. I love you all. I'm grateful for each and every one of you.